Live from Denver 7, this is 7 News. A mixed forecast ahead for the hundreds of firefighters battling the deadly High Park fire. Hello and thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. We're joining you again live from the Fire Command Center in Bellevue, Colorado. And just within the last hour, we got an update from officials here and we have some new numbers. Let's get right to them. So we have the very latest on this High Park fire. This has now burned 46,600 acres. That's an increase of 3,300 acres since yesterday. The good news is the fire growth has slowed somewhat. Firefighters now have this fire 10% contained and they're optimistic about more progress today. And more than 1,000 firefighters are now on scene. And their priority today, working on that fire line. Now, keep in mind, some of that fire line is still going to be inside the perimeter, protecting the structures there. Here's a map of the fire area right now. One area of particular concern is that western flank. 70% of the trees in that area are beetle kill. Along this entire west flank, we've got really difficult conditions to the point where we're assessing the safety of putting firefighters in there and it doesn't look very good. Oh, sorry, we, had, we think we had a sound bite there. I'm not sure if I could hear it. Maybe you heard it at home. But essentially talking about the difficult conditions, and that's what makes this, this fire so complex, is uh, not only the heat of the terrain, but all the, that dead timber in there. Now, today, officials hope to start getting a count on the homes destroyed. Air Tracker 7 was over the fire yesterday, and we saw home after home just reduced to ashes. A terrible sight. Officials say they just hasn't been safe to get in there to try to assess more. That's why we don't have any updates on structures. In fact, some areas are still not safe. It's pretty dangerous for firefighters and county personnel who can help determine the specific addresses and structures to go into those areas. That's the primary reason. And nearly 30 aircraft are expected to join the firefight today. Uh, a combination of heavy air tankers, the smaller airplanes, along with more than a dozen helicopters. We're still waiting to see that air support arrive. You can see behind us, there's still a, an inversion layer here, still a lot of smoke, hard to make out the fire zone just behind us. Uh, you start to see a little bit of that silhouette, so it appears the inversion layer might be lifting a little sooner than it did yesterday, so maybe some good news. Yeah, and uh, I have seen all those uh, air tankers, helicopters up, uh, will be a well Welcome sight to those people who have been evacuated. Seven News uh, photojournalist uh, Major King, who lives in Fort Collins, reports up here up north all the time, is at Ted's place this morning. And uh, Major, you've been watching uh, this army of uh, new recruits, if you will, new people that get out on those front lines. They've been coming in all morning. Tell us about that. Yeah. That's right, Mitch. It's encouraging. We are at Ted's place. That's the confluence of, well, it's the start of uh, Colorado Fort, State Highway 14 and U.S. 287. Uh, I have my friend John Miller push in here. You can see that, obviously, Colorado 14 is still closed. I believe all the way to Walden. Uh, don't even think about going up there. U.S. 287 is open, but uh, yeah, just about about an hour and a half ago, we uh, check out this caravan from the Poudre Valley Rural Electric Association. In particular, check the second semi-trailer that is going by on your screen. He's got some utility poles on here. Uh, utility poles. So that's a given, folks, that we have power lines down somewhere up in the canyon. And just over an hour ago, also, a separate caravan of six wildland fire vehicles from Craig, from Durango, from even Brian Head in southern Utah, headed up the canyon. So obviously lots more resources showing up today to help fight this fire. And uh, coming back live now here, I want to show you the, all these horse trailers over here. These are folks from the Larimer County Horsemen's Association. They are on standby to go up in the canyon to get more animals that need to be you know, brought out of the zone and, and put in a safe place and uh, taken out of harm's way. So good volunteers here. Folks are just kind of standing by to waiting to get that call and uh, be able to go in and, and get those animals. So um, that's the situation from here at Ted's place. Back to you guys. Okay. Major, thank you. We appreciate the update on that. Also concerns here up north about the water supply, essentially for Greeley and for Fort Collins residents. Both cities have had to shift their water sources because of the Hewlett Gulch fire. You know, that was the one a few weeks ago uh, because the, the concern is that with the big storm, all that might be washed, all the soot may wash into the Poudre River and, of course, the Horse Tooth Reservoir. That would not be good for water supplies. Greeley officials warn folks uh, that they may notice a strange odor, maybe even notice a strange taste in the Greeley tap water uh, because of that situation. Now, Tyler Lopez is uh, standing by. He's got more on the, the evacuees. Always looking for new information. And Tyler, it sounds like you might have some good news. It definitely will be for folks who live along this section of US 287. We're about five miles north of where Major is at Ted's place. Remember the scene yesterday? So much more smoke. 
We're in the Cherokee Hill subdivision, and you can see, yes, there is some haze, yes, there is some smoke, but no obvious fire activity here. That is good news for folks who live here. They may get to go home soon. That's part of the reason firefighters are using words today like optimistic and confident. They did make progress Tuesday along this northeastern edge of the High Park Fire. Bonner Peaks is essentially right where we are, just about a mile to the south. Missile, Silo, Mill Canyon, and Soldier Canyon, they all could get to go home tomorrow. But Shoreline Drive and Bellevue areas, they could go home later today, although that won't happen until at least 3 o'clock at the evacuees' briefing. All this, of course, weather dependent. The fire commander expects a significant increase later today in containment. But he also stressed this fire is still doing some very dangerous things. They want to make sure that every firefighter they put on the line can then get out. As you heard, he is not excited at all about putting firefighters on the western edge of this fire. What he's talking about doing is using that beetle kill tree fuel for itself by lighting backfires, letting that burn up. So it may look as if this fire is getting bigger, but that actually could be a defensive tactic to prevent lives and eliminate a lot of those fuels. Anna? Thank you, Tyler. You talked a lot about those evacuees who might be able to get in and go in to check on their homes. A lot of those residents still don't know if they'll have homes to go home to. And Bertha Lynn is joining us live now at the evacuation center at the ranch in Loveland. Bertha, we know there was no meeting with the residents there this morning, but you're still seeing a lot of activity, a lot of people stopping by. That's right. This is kind of a, an area where people can get together, they can grab a bite to eat, they can decompress, they can meet their neighbors, people that they're used to seeing maybe on a regular basis and haven't seen for a while because they've all been evacuated. This is where they come. This is the evacuation center. And they are dealing with a lot of stress here because people are just uncertain. They're, they have no way of knowing whether their homes are going to make it through this crisis. I'm with Danny Barnhart, who has all but official confirmation on his home. Danny, fill me in on your home. Yeah, we, my understanding is that we've lost our home from some firefighter friends of ours up there. Um, we're waiting to the 3 o'clock meeting today to get uh, the for sure confirmation, and then we'll go ahead and file our claim with State Farm. So you have that from reliable sources, not officially yet, but you're pretty sure that's what happened. Where do you live? We're up in the uh, Davis Ranch uh, neighborhood in Risk Canyon. How many homes are up there? I would estimate about 150. And do you think that they met pretty much the same fate? Um, I know uh, Chief Gann had an interesting comment. He said that they've uh, saved a lot of homes and lost some, and then he changed it to say we've saved a lot of homes, but we've also lost a lot of homes. So I would expect a lot of damage, yes. So it's a tough time for you and your neighbors. How much time did you have to get out? Uh, we had about an hour and a half. So, and uh, we just uh, grabbed whatever we could, photo albums and um, things like uh, my wife had made this, uh, this redone thing, a footprints poem for me, and we grabbed that. Um, you know, what were you not able to get? If there were something you could have grabbed, what would you have grabbed? We forgot a lot of things. Uh, my wife kept a, a plant from our wedding alive for 16 years, forgot that, forgot her wedding dress, lots of things that we forgot. Oh, I'm so sorry. Is there any advice that you have for people who are watching right now who may one day be in this kind of a situation? Absolutely. Uh, a great idea is to have some sort of a home inventory. Um, I think that videotaping is a great way to go. Videotaping drawers that have a lot of stuff in them, uh, 360 of rooms, that sort of thing. Um, you know, so when you file your claim, you're more prepared to, to put what, what you had in your home. And you know this because you're an insurance agent and yet you still are finding time here at the evacuation center to help others, to help your clients who are in the same boat with you who've gone through this crisis. For people who are now going to uh, get confirmation of their homes being lost, what's the next step? Um, they, if they, once they have confirmation that their home is lost or damaged, they should go ahead and get their claim filed with their insurance company and uh, you know, start putting together their thoughts of, of what they've lost, for sure. Thank you so much, Danny Barnhart, and um, our hearts go out to you and your family. We wish you so much good luck. We're going to send it now to Dale, who's going to tell us about the weather that firefighters are going to encounter today. Dale? And Bertha, as you can probably attest to, it's already getting warm up there. Temperatures are in the 70s, and it's just going to be a really tough day for those firefighters. As we take a look at some of the maps right there, right around the High Park Fire, you'll notice our closest monitoring site is Redstone Canyon. And unfortunately, it's going in and out all day today. But our temperature
temperature readings around it are in the upper 70s, even close to 80 degrees right there. It's hot, and it's going to get even hotter. Now, the wind gusts are pretty light, as you can see right now. They're all in the single digits, and that's good news for those firefighters really being able to get in there and tackle this blaze. What you will notice, though, is our humidity levels. They are low. Again, this red zone reading is not coming in right now. Fort Collins is coming in at 18. Anything below 35% is a high fire danger, and that just means there's so much more for that fire to easily just pick up and burn as it goes through that area. Let's take a look, though, at the future cast because our new models that just came in are actually showing that there may be a slight chance at getting some of those rain showers. Starting this at noon today, we put it into motion. You're going to see some clouds around 245 this afternoon. And then look at that. This is great news to see a little bit of this green right around there at 330 this afternoon. Now, this is not guaranteeing rain, but this is just showing that at least there's a chance that some of those rain showers could come in. So coming up in just a little bit, we'll actually take you through the rest of the future cast for the Front Range as well as the state to show you what you can expect.